A lot of news happening around it right now with one of our best players who is a legend for one particular organization who happens to be one of the most historic franchises in the history of all of sports. Mm -hmm. Then he makes a big time move to another organization, you know, gets a big time bag, a new home with a quarterback that he knows very well and uh, an offensive coordinator and everybody that kind of wants him over there and they pay him big deal. Then the quarterback's gone, everything's gone, brand new operation. Uh, he says, I want to get the hell out of here, allegedly. And then now, the law Las Vegas Raiders have said, uh, yeah, you can come and get Devontae Adams, even though this conversation was happening all offseason. It was shut down as of yesterday. Now, Devontae Adams is currently on the trade block. Whoa. Mm. There's a lot of teams excited about the potential of adding some greatness to your wide receiver core. And there are some teams that are just mathematically out of the equation. There is some money that's going to be owed to Devontae Adams over the next couple years. Uh, now, 2025, 2026, non-guaranteed. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the uh, Raiders still probably going to get a cap hit out of this thing. But also, it means a new contract is going to have to come alongside of this particular trade. $13.5 million is what's due right now. And then, like, every game check, it goes down throughout the weeks. So if they were to wait for the deadline, which is November 5th, it would be $8.5 million owed to Devontae Adams. Nonetheless, the next two years non-guaranteed. So this contract is basically done after these $13.5 million. You would assume with how this type of situation normally goes with the NFL, a new contract would have to be negotiated, which is like $30 million, you know, is what the going rate is for number one wide receiver. Now, Devontae already got a bag. It won how it went with the Raiders. Is he looking to break the bank yet again in his prime? 31 years old, still one of the top guys of all time. Has the most amount of touchdowns since he joined the Raiders in the entire NFL at 22 or something like that. Is he going to want to break the bank again? Probably going to have to get paid. So who will have $30 million to spend over the next couple of years? Who will be able to add another number one wide receiver? A lot of people saying New York Jets can. Whoa. Oh. And he'd want to play with Aaron Rodgers, wouldn't he? Him and Aaron made magic. Aaron on Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays for numerous years, whenever he was teammates, would say, uh, yeah, that touchdown to Devontae wasn't called. And uh, we literally just looked at each other and we understood what was happening. Yeah, eight years ago, we saw the same exact coverage, didn't we? And what did we do then? Well, instead of running a little stop, we ran a sluggo and it was a touchdown. Him and Aaron speak the same football language. They did for a long time. We watched it. Aaron won multiple MVPs. Devontae Adams became the number one wide receiver conversation in everybody's conversation. He's still that guy, is what everybody is saying around Devontae. And if he and Aaron are able to cook that magic in New York City, Ooh. in New York City, boy, that would be a hell of a story to tell. But don't leave out the New Orleans Saints. No. Mm. Coach Williams, who's a wide receiver coach down there, is actually his mentor, he has said, and his personal wide receiver coach. And also, his college roommate, Derek Carr, is the quarterback in a resurgence year for a Saints offense that is explosive. Now, those are the teams, allegedly, that Devontae has expressed interest in. Those are the two teams that the Raiders have allegedly, uh, not just them, other teams as well, are open to trading Devontae Adams, too. We shall see how it unfolds. Everybody assumes the Kansas City Chiefs won't be in play because that's a division rival. I think that's probably a smart assumption. Tom Telesco, he uh, formerly of the Chargers operation division. Like, I don't think that'll ever happen. But Devontae moving is electrifying. Huge. For everybody but Raiders fans. Mm -hmm. And I think... Behind the scenes, allegedly, this had been brewing for a while because Devontae wanted a new contract. He's seen everybody else's contracts going bananas, and he goes, wait a minute, uh, who's in the, the top three conversation every single Oh, me. Okay. Everybody else is getting paid. How come I'm not getting paid? Just like Jamar Chase was feeling the exact same way. He had two years left on his contract. In this particular setup of a contract, there's only one year left. Devontae wanted money, allegedly, quietly behind closed doors. Then it kind of boiled into this season. Now... It is what it is with Antonio Pierce, the head coach of Las Vegas Raiders, not even saying his name yesterday whenever he was dressing medical reports of him and Max Crosby. He goes, this is exactly how it goes. What are the plans with Max and Devontae at practice this week? And is Michael Mayer back in the building? Uh, with Max and 17, all depends on where they're at health-wise. As of right now, status quo. Whoa. And Mike is still dealing with personal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, didn't give away anything. Didn't say his name, though. Is that a little bit of a heat? We <laughs> shall see. I'm excited to learn where he goes, how he goes, and what teams are inevitably interested. Uh, there's a nine-year NFL vet here, host of everything DB, Good D, Bad D, Darius J. Butler. Yes, D. Butch, Devontae, still Devontae. He has the ability to get open. He can literally, um, he can shake a tree if he had to. <laughs> yeah, he is a phenomenal athlete, yep. and everybody tries to learn from him. He still has it, 31 years old? Still got it. I said it yesterday, a couple of times I think he's still in the prime of his career to think about being in the prime of your career at wide receiver 
Hopefully you have a quarterback that's in the prime of their career as well and then a play caller that can also dial it up. You just need so many things to go right for you as a wide receiver so I can understand the frustration from his part. Obviously something going on behind the scenes there with uh, him and AP. You know, not saying his name. Little that body was language. big, wasn't it? Yeah, that was big. That was big. Yeah, Obviously so after, uh, you know, liking – the Instagram post as well. You know, Aaron came on here a couple of times and talked about how they were watching receivers. So that's how he saw a bunch of Jaden Daniels film. They watched some of the top receivers, mm-hmm. neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr. So him being available, obviously the, the team and the organization was looking for another big play wide receiver, Devontae hitting the mark. And another team that was up there too, the Commanders. You pair him up with Scary Terry with a young quarterback, Jaden oh. Daniels, on a rookie quarterback deal. So you would expect him to have some uh, money, you know, mobility when it comes to the salary cap. I would love to see that with uh, young Jaden Daniels, what he's doing in uh, D.C. Cliff Kingsbury would love to see it as well. Mm-hmm. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, AP Tony's here. The Pittsburgh Steelers, we just mentioned three teams, okay? And there's been two teams that have come out publicly that Devontae Adams mm-hmm. is interested in sure. and are interested in him in the Saints and the Jets. Pittsburgh Steelers, though, big time conversation with Brandon Ayuk. Yep allegedly this offseason, even up to like a $30 million offer. So they already have that amount of money Mm -hmm. potentially ready to spend on the wide receiver position. But then people are also saying the Baltimore Ravens. AP Tone is a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Could you imagine Devontae Adams going to Baltimore Ravens when the Steelers probably very interested as well? Well, my words uh, earlier today when we were talking about if he went to the Ravens, do you remember? You said vomit, I think? Yeah, I would throw up. (laughs) I would puke everywhere if he went to the Ravens. My whole thing is if he doesn't have a no-trade clause and it's not as if Telesco and Pierce don't have allegiance to him. Like, why wouldn't this be a best offer type of situation? I'm not saying the Patriots are offering the best offer because there are other teams out there that could easily offer more if they, you know, really do believe they can go get a Super Bowl, which by all accounts this year, the Patriots can't. But you would assume that they at least make a call, at least say something. Hey, look, we know we're averaging 120 pass yards a game, but why don't you come here? Why don't you come here and get 80 of those? So of bitches? I mentioned Devontae picking and choosing. I guess you're 100% right, especially with how it's going. They're yeah. not necessarily, I mean, that goes back to like what New England would do, guys. Yeah. True. Guys would come in uh, allegedly and, you know, publicly display that they're not happy. And then I uh, was F- go to Cleveland. Like, For, and I was, uh, you know, Cleveland right now, I don't. It's kind of the same as what it was yeah. when I don't they were yeah. to no, but they had, go there. They had good times, though. They had a couple. They had a year. Oh, Last yeah, year, Flack. Baker. Baker won the playoff. Game. Well, and Joey Flack. Remember what Joe Flack yeah, did? Yeah, and, and, and then they said, hey, you want another deal? Look elsewhere, bitch. But anyways, coaches and teams have done that before, and I guess GMs and teams have done that before where they go to, like, worst spot. For Devontae Adams, A.Q. Shipley, you've been a coach. You've been a player. How do the rest of the league view? Like, let's say, because um, there was a couple weeks ago, Antonio Pierce said there were some people making some business decisions. Mm-hmm. And he said on the tape, so maybe we'll have to look into the plays. But was he talking business decision behind the scenes, too? If, like, Devontae didn't want to be a Raider, and he potentially, I have a ham, like, there's no way that's the case that's happening. But is there a chance that teams are definitely calling and asking that question? Like, hey, how? where did this go wrong? Or are we in a modern era right now where people think if we get him in our building, he'll be better than it? We don't give a shit. Like, it's not going to happen in our building like it happened in other people's. Yeah, you nailed it with the second comment. Everybody thinks that whenever they get them in their building, they'll be completely different. And most, most of the time, that's the case, especially if it's a winning franchise, right? When you look at this, he comes out with a hamstring on Thursday. It's like... We stink. Meh. I don't, I'll, I'll wait a couple weeks. There's a chance it could happen. We're yeah, not saying that they did that. Yeah, We're not a, saying this that, this could happen. In and I've seen it happen, right? Like, I've seen it happen in in buildings, especially, you know, you're three and six or three and five. It's like, whew. You know those 50-50 injuries where you normally go? Nah, we're shutting it down. Mm-hmm. We're shutting it down. And you can only be who you can afford to be. Not everybody can do that. Yeah. Obviously, bottom half the roster, uh, I got a, I got a 30-70, and I'm picking the 30 <laughs> to play so that I can get on the field because yeah. I can't be worth – I'll lose my job if I get injured and I can't play in there. Not saying Devontae did that, but these are questions that teams will certainly have whenever they're calling the mm-hmm. Raiders. For sure. And then I, I think back in the day that mattered more. I think now it doesn't matter. Like, it not working here in Oakland and him saying 17 and all this shit happening this quickly into this season when seemingly going into the year, this guy's one of our pillars. We're going to build around this guy. This is the Raiders' culture that we want. That was basically the conversation that was happening. And now it's like we're going opposite directions. I think back in the day, teams would have cared more about that thing. The word distraction, I think, Mm -hmm. back in the day, meant a lot more around the league. Now it's like, can I got a ball? Yeah. (laughs) We can get him. Bring him and in. He'll, be better. he'll yeah. be better with us. And I think that's not a bad mentality. I, I think that's a good thing, not a bad thing. But it's like, I wonder how many people will wonder why and how this all went wrong. You'll definitely wonder, especially when you're 
trying to read the tea leaves, read the writing on the wall. But the thing about Devontae, he's already built up his credibility of who he is, who he is a pro. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen him get paid, who he is with money. So it's not like, at least for me and everything that we've seen, once again, when Aaron was on yesterday talking about uh, Aaron Jones, Devontae was one of the guys that he mentioned. Jordy was one of the guys that he mentioned. And and I, from outside looking at how this guy plays, you can tell almost you know how his teammates react to him, how much he loves the game. When they were sucking last year, when Jimmy G was throwing him, you know, oh. In the in the big hits, and he was pissed off. He was still coming out there, showing up, and giving his best effort. And then the other part of it is, you know, you if you come to a championship culture, you, if you come to a team that's built to contend or compete this year, you expect to get the best out of Devontae. So I don't think it'd be any concerns at that point with him. Now, if this is a rookie or a guy, maybe on their, mm. uh, you know, two. Three years in, you may have some questions and concern, but I think Devontae is pretty much solid on who he is around the league. I said earlier he could shake a tree. I, I think like a Redwood would actually go with him, think yeah. that he's going one way. He's shaking mm -hmm. the phone booth. His cuts are just so deliberate. And so it, it, I don't – he's not like – Tyreek Hill runs a 4-2, right? So that is uh, – that is a way – he might be the fastest guy in the world. That is a weapon at a wide receiver to get open. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That is a way to get open. This dude is not the fastest human on earth. Very fast, but mm -hmm. not the fastest human on earth and can get open on anybody. Yeah. Like that Play is speed. and his 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 catch radius yep. hand. is stupid. It's like that is why I feel like he understands he's the number one wide receiver in the league. And I think he wants to get back to proving it every week. I think yeah. he wants to get back to a team where he can. And like I need a quarterback, I, man. I need a quarterback. Got a guy to get with a quarterback. Because all the things you mentioned, his suddenness, his, his, you know, his, his ability to separate, his ability to catch, show late hands, read coverages and adjust the coverages, you know, mid route. That's the tough one. When receivers are out there thinking, a lot of people will say, hey, this young guy, he was a 4'3 guy, he's 6'3, he can, all these different things. But you got to be able to get open consistently. Obviously, you got to be able to make contested catches. You got to be able to read coverages. Your route will completely change if it's single high and it rotates to split safety post coverage. And if a quarterback can't trust you to know exactly where you need to be, they're not going to throw you the ball. So all those things he still has at an elite level right now with Devontae Adams. Well, and that's why it's like outside looking in. Sure, you could view it as like, <laughs> oh, this guy's, you know, a problem. Maybe he is. I had no idea. <laughs> no, no clue. But maybe he is, you know, being a distraction. But also, like he he went to Vegas for a couple reasons, and it's been three years. He's played with five quarterbacks. He's had two head coaches. Like there has to be some sort of idea that hey, everywhere this guy's gone, everyone's praised him for how for how hard of a worker he is. He's been called the pillar of the franchises he's been a part of. Like absolutely, distraction is one way to look at this. But also, at a certain point, the guy is towards the end of his career, he hasn't been able to, you know, play in a playoff game in a very long time yet, yeah, compete for a Super Bowl. It's like, you can understand someone who, who what, what did he say last year? Or maybe it was this year, you know, he he's not going for stats. He's competing against greatness or, or whatever the, the sentiment was that he had when the whole Derek Carr thing was going down. So, like, if I'm any team, that's either – I mean, I guess any team in general, terrible, you know, bottom of the league to yeah, one Colts. of these teams at the top. Oh, well, whoa. I mean, yeah, I don't Colts know about that. is a not a terrible team, not at the bottom, <laughs> but why not have Devontae Adams come to the Indianapolis Colts? That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah. Anthony Richardson allegedly day to day. That's good news. He was it? Okay. Because right. I thought in take, the middle take, of the game that was potential real season. Take your time. Yeah, take your time. Take your time. If get, it's a bruised hip, bone bruises. Six to eight. What's that? He should take six to eight. I mean, he could I, make sure I would say that, that much time, but uh, what is your problem? Healthy. Feels like you're saying wanted something to else. Want to be out there playing, but uh, the stat you, you threw out there, and I, I was surprising me. You said Devontae Adams leads the league in touchdowns. Twenty-two, yeah, since going yeah. to the Raiders. Since, since yeah, since that, he went to the Raiders. I, I, I don't, that's that's incredible. That's mind blowing. With the that quarterbacks that he was, with. yeah, that's, that's yeah, he had like crazy. three or four or something like that. I think like in a couple games, like he, well, yeah, it was, he, that's it was, crazy. Yeah, he went bananas a few times. Colts. I was, I was looking for the tweet. Killed the Colts. Yeah, all those highlights were against the Colts. I was watching the highlights. I saw Lucas Oil <laughs> Stadium in the back. I'm like, I can't even see the players yet. I can only see the ball. What are we doing here? And then lo and behold. Late hands grab. He saw and, it. Yeah. yeah, he's so good. Uh, I, I, good luck out there, Devontae. Mm -hmm. We hope you find what you're looking for. Come to New England.